Positive thinking is presented as something that heals everything. When you think positively, everything is magically solved. Very positive things start to happen in your life and everything works just fine. Almost everybody likes this idea because it is really cute and the results are tempting. But the fact that everybody agrees about an idea does not mean that it is right. I ask you please the opportunity to show you another point of view. Until the end of this video, you will see that this obsession with positivity has been increasing moralism, self-righteousness and inhumanity. I'm Cavalier. What positive thinking offers will almost certainly not be refused. You think positively and positive things happen in your life. Thinking positively is a relief all by itself. Not having to deal with the dark side of life, not having to deal with problems and pain, not having to deal with the depth of philosophical and ethical problems and remaining on the surface is is a relief all by itself. Super 3D. The results are even better. Napoleon Hill, the creator of positive thinking, started by promising what everybody wants, including myself, money. His book's title is think and grow rich. Perhaps due to a certain embarrassment about putting money above all else, spiritualists began to teach to use positive thinking to materialize things considered to be more elevated, such as love and the world peace. Positive thinking easily found its way into holistic healing techniques like kinesiology, theta healing and access bars. By the way, I'm a kinesiologist therefore this is self-criticism. Despite their differences, all of them get down to the same point. The therapist, the client or both define what positive is. Positive always corresponds to what the client wants. Hmm. The therapists then use their techniques to somehow program the client or the client's life to make happen what they themselves have defined as positive. How beautiful that is! It seems obvious that this is right. Nobody will argue against that, given our society's obsession with being the best and the greater in everything, as well as accomplishing the highest results. Who doesn't want to find the genie of the lamp who will make all your wishes come true? There is only a little problem. When you put the realization of your wishes as the top priority of your life, you are stuck in your ego and in the third dimension. After all, you want your wishes to come true in your way in order to force life to be the way you want. This is what being imprisoned in the ego looks like. Believing that the positive, the right, always corresponds to what you want is a complete illusion. Illusions are by no means harmless. Illusions are extremely dangerous. Illusions imprison your consciousness. Illusions are convictions. Convictions that imprison you in illusory realities. This illusion imprisons you in which reality? In this illusory reality, the obsession with positivity increases the moralism, self-righteousness and inhumanity. Let's start with this curse, moralism. Let's say you think just like the creator of positive thinking, Napoleon Hill, and think positively to make money. Or you think positively to have something everybody wants, health. Who can guarantee that these things are necessarily positive? Let me tell you a bit of my own story. Some of the unique gifts I have today have been developed when I had no money and needed to create new paths. Also, in 2015, I had a serious illness. 
I suffered very much, but the disease was a turning point and I finally freed myself of things that had been imprisoning myself for many, many years. Have you ever watched one of those movies where someone discovers a terminal illness and starts to do all they always wanted to do? That's it, liberation. I'll tell you these full stories in future videos. You see, I am not saying that not having money or not being healthy is a good thing. It is not. It is indeed terrible. It is painful. But life is bigger than myself. The transcendental is bigger than myself. These were their decisions. I had no money and I was ill. It was horrible. I was in pain. But I also developed new abilities and liberated myself. I do not want to go through all that again. But at the same time, I would not change the gifts I developed and the liberation I achieved in these difficult situations for positive thinking. I choose my depth. Before these negative situations, I found them awful. I still do. But I can't deny they have produced very positive results. Napoleon Hill himself contradicts himself and positive thinking. Therefore, dearest viewer, moralism is not your old aunt's beliefs about the need to marry as a virgin. Moralism is about you believing to be wiser than life and wanting to determine all by yourself what is right and what is wrong, what is positive and what is negative. You try to cut off all the parts of yourself and your life that you consider not to be good. Now you are a half-being. Besides this self-imposed violence, you will lose all the consciousness and growth that could come from negative life experiences. Imprisoned in the illusory reality of positive thinking, you are inhuman with yourself. Believing that you can determine what is right and what is wrong for the whole world is even more moralistic. For instance, I, Cavalier, believe that the world would be a much better place if people dedicated themselves to reflecting about deep psychological, philosophical and ethical topics of life. It seems good, huh? Should I think positively to attract that? Suppose I succeeded and managed to establish this reality in the world. Would everybody be happy? about having to dedicate themselves to this deep reflection? Of course not. People are different and there is nothing that pleases everybody. Lots of people would certainly hate this imposition of reflecting. I myself would be terribly bored by living in a world that is only deep. I also need superficiality. Now, when you are a moralist and self-entitled to define what is right, what is positive, and use techniques such as kinesiology, theta healing, and access bars to program life, to program life, to program life to do this or that, either you are terribly arrogant or you are one step away from madness. There is no deeper imprisonment in the ego and in the third dimension. Wait, there is. This illusory reality is inhuman. Moralism always has the side effect of inhumanity. There is a very simple way to know whether you are a moralist. If you believe that your perspective about life is the right one, you are a moralist. When you believe on that, any different point of view immediately becomes the wrong one. Positive thinking teaches that positivity is the right thing, imposes positivity and distances itself from negativity. People with problems, pain or diseases should be 
avoided. At the very least, positive thinking suggests that they ignore their problems and pain, switching them off like you do with a TV. They should start thinking positively because if they do that, their problems will immediately cease to exist. But if people are unable or unwilling to ignore their problems and pain, those people will immediately be seen as inferior. Imprisoned in the moralistic, illusory reality of positive thinking, you subtly start to be inhuman towards other people. I have been through that many times. Given that I studied Nietzsche, astrology and Jungian psychology since I was a teenager, I learned real fast not to deny my own shadow. As a result, many spiritualists treated me as someone inferior. They politely smiled, but their thoughts were crystal clear to me. He is still in darkness. He has not yet seen the positivity and the light I see. I am going to be patient with him. Someday he will reach the level I am. Some people even comment that in my videos here on YouTube. I didn't want them to agree with me. I just wanted them to be interested in the reality of a different human being, someone living in a reality different from theirs. Don't allow this illusion to imprison you. Leave it behind. Destroying illusions is an act of courage, because destroying illusions is destroying convictions that you publicly stood for and seeing the life you have built on this illusion collapse. Destroying illusions is liberating because it opens the access to new realities. In this new reality, you become aware that you, your thoughts, your personality and your life have positive and negative sides. You accept yourself the way you are and your self-esteem increases. You humanize yourself. In this new reality, you become aware that other people have positive and negative sides. You accept them the way they are and value them. You humanize other people. There are no right people and wrong people. There are only people in their own stories. And it is simply impossible to compare their existence with yours because your perspective is not the standards of the universe. When we are not forced to be only positive and speak only about positive things, we stop to try to escape from the negative things of life. Depth increases and it becomes possible to really share. You now have a large spiritual wisdom to share and others have a large different wisdom to share. Now, all people are human beings and authorities in their own lives. In this new reality, you stop to manipulate life in order to force it to do what you want and understand the nature of the transcendental. Transcendence is bigger than you are. It decides what to do with you, not you. The transcendence's behavior will not always correspond to what you believe to be positive. Both the positive and the negative develop your consciousness and make you grow. Transcendence is positive and negative at the same time. Transcendence is the wholeness.